Okay, so here we go now, um, getting into the cell cycle of the eukaryotic cell, how a cell um, functions normally, and then also how it divides itself to make new cells. We're going to talk about that cycle and the actions therein. Um, this is a picture of a number of plant cells. You can tell they're plant cells by their fairly regular shape. You can see the genetic material inside the nucleus. The dark spots are the nucleoli. These are in various states of this cell cycle, whether it's interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. And hopefully by the end of this unit, you'll be able to identify these different phases of the cell cycle. Um, we're going to get right into it. This is what you'll see typically um, when being described the cell cycle. It's kind of broken down um, in a pie chart with the majority of the pie chart uh, being comprised of the, the blue and this lavender um, sections here. The G1, the S phases, and the G2 phase make up interphase. And interphase is about 90% of a cell's life. If this is the beginning and here is the end, G1, S, and G2 make up 90%, make up the majority of life. We have the M phase here. The M stands for mitosis. Okay, and then cytokinesis is going to happen right here uh, where the cell is going to split into two daughter cells. Also, note here there's a G0 phase that many um, cells in our body enter where they're just a holding pattern. You obviously don't want all your cells dividing at all times. That would be a problematic. So, um, this is the overview. What's the purpose of the cell cycle? Well, it details the, the, the entirety of the cell's life, but the cell uh, naturally wants to reproduce, okay? And the purpose of mitosis, which was this M phase of the cell cycle, the purpose of mitosis is to duplicate a somatic cell. Recall a somatic cell is a body cell with 46 chromosomes, it's diploid, uh, and form two new identical copies called daughter cells. So we have our original somatic cell. Um, let's say it's a skin cell. You want to produce two new functional skin cells. You don't want to produce two new uh, bone cells or two new liver cells. You want to produce two new skin cells. All right. And there's various reasons why you'd want to do that. All right. Um, functionality of mitosis. Well, first of all, it's important that you restrict cell size. You don't want cells to get too big. Um, and, and the reason is because you want to maintain a, a, a manageable surface area to volume ratio. As a cell grows, think about surface area. Mathematically, um, there are two factors that you're multiplying in surface area, right? Length and width. Um, volume is a cubic calculation, okay? So as a cell is growing, the volume is going to increase exponentially faster than surface area. So as a cell grows, volume increases much faster and quickly becomes um, unmanageable. So cells need to stay small in order to, um, to transport nutrients easily and efficiently within the cell. You need mitosis for growth, okay? Going from an infant to an adult, you obviously have more cells as an adult than you do as an infant. You're growing, you have more cells. And repair, all right, when you're doing damage to your muscle cells or you have a cut on your skin, uh, mitosis is going to repair that cut. And we'll talk in, in, in later um, screencasts about how that repair actually happens. Some basic terminology. Let's get through this. Um, hopefully, it will, well, obviously you need terminology to be able to talk about this stuff. Um, but the chromosomes are, are the main characters here. And what's a chromosome? It's a, it's a molecule of DNA. And this is a highly oversimplified um, graphic uh, of, of a chromosome. But you can think of a chromosome as a highly coiled molecule of DNA. All right? And in G1, you have unduplicated chromosomes. So you have a single chromosome. Um, when you approach the S phase of interphase, you're going to synthesize more of your DNA, okay? And this unduplicated chromosome duplicates, and you now have a duplicated chromosome. Here was your original, going down this end, here is its duplicate. They're twins. Now we have a duplicated chromosome with this X shape. 
okay? This duplicated chromosome is made up of two chromatids, okay? Chromatid and chromosome are interchangeable, okay? I could also call this a chromatid, as we have here. I can call this an unduplicated chromosome. I can call it a chromatid. Now we have a duplicated chromosome or a pair of chromatids, one chromatid here, one chromatid here. Since they are identical to one another, they're kind of like Siamese twins held together here at the centromere, okay? We call them sister chromatids. They're kind of like twin sisters. Once again, held together at the centromere. This word kinetochore, kinetochore is a protein within the, the centromere. There's, there would be a kinetochore on this side, if you can see the pointer, and on this side, um, if you break down kinetochore, um, kinetics probably has something to do with movement. You're going to see later on, yes, indeed it does. Okay, so chromosome is unduplicated, also called a chromatid. We have a duplicated chromosome made up of sister chromatids. Hopefully we have that straight so we can move on. Interphase, we said before, made up of G1, S, and G2. And during interphase, during this 90% of the cell's life, it's carrying on general life function. Okay, G1, uh, it's metabolizing things. It's breaking down waste. It's creating proteins. It's creating enzymes. It's transporting vesicles in different places. We've learned, you guys are experts on the G1 phase. You know what a cell does metabolically. You know what a cell has to accomplish in order to stay alive uh, through photosynthesis, through cellular respiration. Um, many cells in your body, as we said earlier, will kick into this G0 phase where they're kind of in a holding pattern. Your brain cells, your neurons, your, you don't want your brain cells um, constantly dividing, okay? There's a limited amount of space in your, in your uh, cranial cavity for those cells to exist. So um, if there is some kind of event that occurs where you needed more cells, um, some kind of chemical signal will kick them from G0 into G1 and this process will occur. But if there isn't a signal, they'll just maintain in that holding pattern. The S phase is when DNA is synthesized. The S phase, if we go back a slide, is when you go from having unduplicated chromosomes to having duplicated chromosomes. This is when you're synthesizing more DNA. Okay, in interphase, it's very important um, that we duplicate everything in the body. If you think about if I were to um, reproduce in this similar fashion, okay, if I were to produce two new me's, well, what would have to happen first? I would have to duplicate everything in my body, okay? Two new lungs, another heart, another stomach, another liver, etc. Um, and, and, and this is what's happening in interface. So obviously, G1 is gap one, G2 is gap two. I also think of it as growth, okay? Because as these things are um, being duplicated, as these, as these organelles are being duplicated, as the DNA is de being duplicated, the cell obviously has to grow. So it's growing, uh, it's duplicating in interface, we move into, metaf or into mitosis, excuse me, and then finally cytokinesis. I said earlier, I believe, in interphase, it's important that we organize the DNA, all right? Not only do we need to duplicate everything, but we need to organize the DNA uh, because we want the same amount of DNA in our daughter cells as we have in our original. So at the beginning, in G1, of interphase. At the beginning of this process, the um, DNA is uncoiled, it's unpackaged, it's very um, unorganized, okay? You can see it kind of similar to a, a bowl of spaghetti, okay? In order to organize it, we need to pack it, okay? We need to coil it up, and we have our DNA double helix here, and we start coiling it around these proteins called histones. And we coil them up and we supercoil and keep coiling, keep coiling, keep coiling until it's a supercoil and we end up with this chromosome. Okay, you can see this half is the chromosome, also called a chromatid. This half is another chromosome, it's sister chromatid. And overall we have a duplicated chromosome. 
but you can see it's highly coiled and packed DNA. It's much more organized in this fashion than it is when it's chromatin. Okay, so in interphase, it's important that we go from chromatin, we duplicate our chromosomes, and we coil them up. We duplicate our chromatin, we duplicate our chromosomes, we coil them up into duplicated chromosomes, and then we're going to be doing the real work. You're going to see why it must be organized when we move into mitosis, but it's really important that we organize and we pack the chromatin into chromosomes. Chromatin is unpacked, um, uncoiled chromosomes, very unorganized. We get into mitosis. There's, depending on um, where you're reading, uh, there's four to five different phases. We're going to stick with four. We're going to go with prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. This is when the cell's nucleus uh, and the cell itself is actually splitting. We're moving chromosomes around. We're allocating um, different organelles and different things to the two new daughter cells that are going to be formed. And this is cytokinesis over here. This is the actual splitting of the cytoplasm. All right? and, and it signifies the end of this cycle. We started with our original and we end up with two new daughter cells after cytokinesis. And I realize there should be a, a T there. I apologize. Alright, so that in itself is the cell cycle. We're going to move into mitosis. We're going to go more in depth uh, into each of these phases. We're going to talk about controls on this cell cycle, different checkpoints, because if this cell cycle gets out of control, if prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and interphase, if they all continue unchecked, that's a huge problem. That causes cancer cells, and we all know what that does to the body. So stay tuned. We're going to keep going with this.